Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is uh, Rob Shmuel, Rabbi Stephen, with you with this week's Devar Torah. Now, this is really a Ha'azinu is the last Torah portion that we're going to read on Shabbat for the cycle of the Torah reading. Now, interestingly enough, when we go through Simcha Torah at the end of the High Holidays, and we roll and we read the last part of the Torah, we re-roll the scroll, and we start with Bereshi. We are already a couple, two or three weeks into 5782, the new year. And when we finish up 5782, we still have about three more portions left to read, including Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur Torah readings, before we actually end the reading of the Torah. So it goes into the new year. So the Torah reading, though the Torah readings for uh, the next Torah cycle will start in 5782, but it will not finish up till 5783. So even though Ha'azinu is the last portion that we, that we will read for Shabbat, the next time we read the Torah on Shabbat, it will be Bereshit. We still have a Shabbat of uh, Sukkot to go through. And the last portion of the Torah, Vizot Habracha, and these are the blessings, is not read on a Shabbat. It's read during Simcha Torah. And we finish up that portion. Then we roll the scroll. We re-roll the Torah back to the beginning of Bereshit. And we read the first two chapters of Genesis, of Bereshit. And in that way, we are showing that it is a cycle that is always continuing, never ending. Cycle, circle. So in a way, the fact that the Torah readings, the portions, overlap the year, and the fact that the last Torah portion is read in conjunction with the first Torah portion shows that there really is no beginning and no end. Think of it that way. So, Ha'azinah our last full-on Shabbat Torah reading, okay? Ha'azinu, give ear, give ear, Israel. Now, in this particular portion, Moses, it's called a song. Now, in the last portion, Moses, they say, well, Moses wrote down the song. The sages say, well, it's the song that we're going to read in the next, the next portion because it is done kind of as a rhyme, as a meter. Okay, and a song uh, in the Torah is different than when we think of as a song. A song is actually just, just kind of a literary license in a way, according to the Torah. You know, it calls forth heaven, it uses uh, illusion, alliteration, it uses imagery, and it's, you know, all, all these things. Okay. But in my mind, when Moses says this song, I'm thinking, is he referring just to that portion? which is in the structure of a, of, a, of a biblical song, or is he talking about the whole Torah? It's one of those gray areas where you really have to think about it and say, hmm, you know, because in the Torah, we have all sorts of different meanings. Now, for us as humans, you know, we see the mysteries of the universe is encased. It is weaved, is woven into the fabric of the Torah because the Torah is God's law. So within the Torah, and the sages have been looking at this for the last two, three thousand years, is that this is God's blueprint of the universe. A lot of it is how we behave because our actions mean something. Our actions ripple. And, and I know some of you might think, hey, that, that sounds very Buddhist or very Hinduistic. The fact that our, our actions have um, consequences throughout the whole universe, but they do. You know, we're all like one big Individual cogs in a very, very big machine. Not that we're mechanical, but our interactions affect each other. So the whole point of having Torah and knowing how to interact with each other is how we build the universe. Think about that. Moses is, is both admonishing and praising Israel. So the structure of Ha'azinu is in the, in the structure of two columns for each page, and it appears that way in the Torah as well. Now, the Masoretes, who put all the grammatical and all the Nikud marks, the vowels and the cantillations into the Torah, acknowledge that the first 
12 or so verses of Ha'azin who start on the right column, Hebrew being read right to left. And that's what you would imagine. But halfway down into that, say around verse 14 or 15 or so, and going on for about, uh, I think about 20 verses, the verses start on the left column. And then at the end, it starts again on the right, and then there's uh, then there's prose, there's the discussion, there's description, like the rest of the Torah. So as Moses is both first praising Israel, saying this is what God did for you, et cetera, et cetera, and then he goes on to say, but Israel, you will betray Hashem. You will go off and you will seek other gods and you will worship other gods, but God's wrath will flare against you. You will think, oh, wow, my prosperity, and we've been saying this a lot, is due to my own work. But actually, it is God, it is Hashem that is giving you that prosperity. Don't forget it, because when you do forget it, and you think that you're above God's law and above God's Torah, and you seek out alien gods and alien alien practices, God will desert you too, measure for measure. So, but in the end, you will come back. So the columns, the actual structure, says something about the construct of this particular portion. So we've got two columns, two columns very much like pillars. Think about when we read Song of the Sea, the way the verses were structured. We had a verse first, then a verse here, verse here. I will tell you from being the person that arranged the hay on the cart when I was in Israel and we were bailing hay, I will tell you that that's the way you have to pile the hay. You can't pile it one on top of each other, of another. You find that out. You go over a dip and bam, the whole thing falls down because there's no there's no support. So when you, in Song of the Sea, when you have verse, 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 okay, you have the verses gravity pulling the, uh, the hay or the verses down, as it were, metaphorically. And that way they're kind of strong. But when you have two pillars, the way it is in Ha'azina, it's not, it's not very, very structurally sound, right? It's easy for it to topple over. The hidden message in that is that Israel, you're playing with fire. Don't think you've got this lick because you don't. Make sure that you study Torah because it's going to be easy to stray. You know, you're kind of tentative here. The other part of it, the reason why the verses first start on the right and then on the left, well, when we talk anthropomorphically about God, that is when we assign human qualities to God, and you know, God does what he does because that's the construct of the universe. God doesn't have emotions the way we do. God doesn't feel vengeance or anger or happiness. Or, that's just us as humans describing and perceiving God because that's our frame of reference. We're humans. So the right hand, if you were, of God is Mercy, the left hand, is justice. So the pillars start out starting on the right because God's mercy. But then as Israel strayed, we see the left hand of justice come into play. And then when Israel finally figures it out and gets it and says, wow, you know, we really messed up. You know, we need to, to shoot, right? We need to return. That's why it's very appropriate that this portion is being read during Shabbat Shuvah, which is the Sabbath of return the Shabbat that is between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So we're returning to God. And of course, everything will work out because we are, yes, a stiff-necked people, but we do learn. We do, it takes us a while, but after a while, we do get it. So that really is the essence of Ha'azinu. And, you know, like the two portions before this, Vayelech, um, and, and the one before that, which was Nitzavim, they're shorter portions. I mean, we're coming to the end of the Torah and we're finishing up, we're wrapping up the story of uh, of, Jew, of the beginning of Judaism, really, and you know, us adopting God's law. You know, we, we start to come to the close and the portions are kind of smaller. And now we have kind of, after all these columns, after this poetry that Moses talks about, this song, you know, it, Moses looks around, God says, okay, it's time. And Moses goes up, is going to go up to the mountain. He uh, tells everybody that Joshua is now in charge. You know, he, he empowers Joshua, who was called Hosea, because he had humility, humility in front of his teacher and his master. 
And Moses is now going up uh, to Mount Nebo to basically, literally, meet his maker. This is it. You know, but a man like Moses, a prophet, had such perception, had such a relationship with God and the rest of the universe, like they say about death, you know, for somebody of his stature, it's like when they die, it's kind of like, it's like pulling a hair out of milk. You know, it's nothing. For the rest of us, we're so enmeshed with reality. We're so involved in the material universe. It's, it's very traumatic for us when we die. But for Moses, meh, just another snake. So we will see you Shabbat Shuvah. Thank you for listening. And Shabbat Shalom.